building strong leaders because the home is as strong as its leaders. The church is as strong as its leaders. The family is as strong as its leaders. The marriage is as strong as the leadership in the marriage. And your workplace is as strong as the leaders. And the nation is as strong as its leaders. And so today we are going to emphasize about leadership that is from the Lord and is of the Lord. It is kingdom leadership, which is uh, the upside down leadership that Jesus continues to speak into our lives. So the leadership in the church is so different from the leadership outside of the church. And this is the leadership that really enhances and builds and impacts and influences many lives in all the generations. So the, 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 the crucial, uh, uh, the essence and importance of leadership, we cannot overemphasize even uh, in your home, in the connect groups, in the ministry. The leadership is so important. Today we are going to read from the Gospel of Matthew. Can I invite you to stand for the reading of the word? Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. Today we are reading from the New Living Translation. So can we ask you to uh, uh, read the word together? But Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in the world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Father, we thank you for the reading, the hearing, and the doing of your word. So bless us, Lord, even as we choose to allow the Spirit to convict us, to speak into each of our lives. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The context here is when the mother of uh, James and John, the apostles, came to Jesus and, and just kneeled down before Jesus and asked Jesus, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, can you give a special position for my two sons, James and John, by your side? One on your right, one on your left. But Jesus says, can they take the cup of suffering? Jesus was asking them whether do they know what they are asking to be in the high position. They come suffering first. And they said, sure, we can. But Jesus also told them, yes, they are going to suffer. How are they going to suffer? James was the first of the apostles to be martyred for the kingdom. And John was tortured and then exiled to the island of Patmos. John was the author of the Gospel of John and also the epistles of John and also the book of Revelation. But Jesus says, it is not up to me to give you the position right or left. It is up to my Father. And so, the, when the other 10 apostles heard what these two were asking, and the mother of the two was asking Jesus privately, they were very upset, angry. Why? Because they were accusing James and John and the mother of, of, of actually using their family connection with Jesus because somehow Jesus is related to James and John through their mother. And so, they were trying to pull cable Pull, pull uh, son to say, Lord, look at my, you know, just like you talk about chronism and nepotism. Huh? He says, I want position, I want position. And even, even among the apostles, we have this happening. And so Jesus knew and Jesus is preparing us that 2,000 years later, the church is also having the same challenge. That many times we have people, leadership, even pastors, want to in be to have a position want to have authority power because they know that they can get attention either they can get benefits either they can get fame or they can get acclaim or people will will respect them or honor them so jesus called all the 12 disciples and that's where we have we come to this passage and jesus began to teach them something so 
radical, something so shocking that they never thought could happen because Jesus is uh, teaching them about a radical form of servant leadership. Jesus is the greatest servant leader ever. Why do we say that? Because Jesus is the one who came from heaven. He left, he put aside his power, his authority, his, his, uh, his, his fame and, and his glory to come down to be like one of us. And so when we talk about the true servanthood, we talk about true leadership, we must always look at the one who is the supreme example, the preeminent example. It is the Lord Jesus himself. So Jesus has the authority to correct and to rebuke the disciples. And Jesus has the authority every time we read the word, every time we are reminded about servant leadership, Jesus is speaking to us. Jesus is rebuking us. Jesus is reminding us, no, 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 no. Leadership is different in the kingdom, in the church, in the home where God, where Jesus is Lord, in the marketplace where Jesus is Lord, in wherever that God has positioned where Jesus is Lord, leadership is totally upside down. It's an upside down kingdom. Do you know that right from the beginning of the Bible in the book of, of Genesis, starting when God created Adam and Eve, God created Adam and Eve and He made them according to His image and He made them according to His likeness. And one of the things that connects us to God that all the other creations do not have is that we all have been given rulership, dominion and leadership over all of God's creation. But something happened when sin came in. It began to cause us to to malfunction instead of to function as, as image bearers of our, our Lord Jesus Christ, as representative of God on earth, there is a malfunction and we begin to misuse the leadership, the rulership that we have over all. And that's why now today we have all the environmental problems. We have wars and conflicts because we misuse leadership, rulership and dominion that God has given to us. So Jesus has come to when he brought in the disciples, today he's speaking to us. He says, listen carefully. Listen carefully. Because Jesus at this time, just before the incident where the, 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 the two apostles asked for position, Jesus was talking about he's going to die. He's going to be crucified. And then he's going to rise again. But instead, the disciples were more interested in position. I want a position, I want power, I want authority, I want a title. And Jesus says, actually, I, I told you I'm going to die. And you talk about position. Do you know what are you asking? And so there was this, the, the opposite mindset. And so we know that the apostles, can you imagine if the apostles had problem, even when Jesus was there physically, how much more we will have problems many times understanding the word of God, the truth of God, and even about leadership. So what is leadership actually in essence? Leadership is to influence people, is to inspire people, is to motivate people, is to direct people, is to envision, to be a model and to set the pace. Whether you are in the church, in the ministry, whether you are in the home as a husband, uh, as a leader in a home, or whether you are uh, uh, in, in the marketplace, you are called to be a leader, a manager, an executive, a CEO. There is an influence that is so powerful. And so today in this world, there is a leadership crisis. There is a leadership deficit that we are not leading people towards their best. We are not leading people to be all that God wants them to be until we come back to servant leadership until we come back to what a leader should be. You know that there are many leadership books, leadership training, leadership programs, and leadership gurus in our world today. And one of them that I, I, I listen to is John Maxwell. You know, he's a Christian leader who used... Do you know that many of the good principles that all these leaders, whether they are Christian or non-Christian, do you know that the good principles are the ones actually we already have in the Bible? 
It all comes from the Word of God. Because why? The greatest leader, the greatest servant is Jesus himself. So when Jesus came, he came us to teach us, says, look at me, follow me, and you will be the best leader in the home. You'll be the best leader in the marketplace. You'll be the best leader in the church, whichever leadership, you'll be the best leader in the connect group, in the ministry, wherever that God has called you to be. Jesus has come. Do you know when Jesus spoke about being a servant, he says, if you want to be a great leader, you want to be great, you must be the servant of all. If you want to be first, and all, you know, we all have a problem, we want to be number one. We want to be first, you must be a slave of all. So Jesus was saying something that I think gave them a heart attack. It really shook their beliefs because in their mind, they, they are thinking about the Romans leaders. They're talking about the Greek leaders. They're talking even about their Jewish leaders. leaders. All of them always won prominent places. They go to the temple. They go for feasts. They go to her. They go to the best places. They want to be acknowledged. They want their names to be called out. They want to be number one. But Jesus says, if you want to be number one, you must be the last. The first will be the last, and the last will be the first. This is the upside down. And so this really shook. And now the apostles begin to rethink a bit again about leadership. And this is what we need to do even uh, wherever we are that God has placed us. In fact, all of us are leaders. Somewhere we are leading somewhere. Even for a mom, uh, for a wife, you are leading your children. You are leading your home. For a husband, you are leading the whole family. For those in the ministry, you are leading, even in your workplace, you, if you are a manager, if you are a supervisor, you are leading people. And so the leadership that truly honors God is a kind of leadership that is so different. And that's why, that's why Jesus says, no, no, this is not the way. It's so different in the kingdom of God. So there are two points only today that I just want to uh, bring before you from this passage about servant leadership. The first is that leaders don't wear crowns. For the ladies, they don't wear tiara, you know. Leaders, you know that the rulers, verse 25, you know that rulers in this world lord it over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. And that was what happened because the leaders, even the, the soldiers will simply grab people and ask them to do whatever they want. The religious leaders always demanded to be the first, you know, to be prominent, to have the attention to say people, to ask them rabbi, uh, to feed them and to give them money. So people were misusing their authority. That is the issue with worldly leadership. That is an issue with leadership that does not honour God. So leaders don't wear a crown. We know our politicians, they are famous for all wanting to be leader, wanting to be in position, but when it comes to serving, no. You know, they will come and promise you, they, they are in their campaign, they say, I will do this, I will do that. When it comes to actually getting their hands dirty, to doing the work, they will not be there. They will not be seen. And we pray that the new batch of people will actually appear even in the parliament, even if they want right here, because sometimes they don't even show up, you know, to represent the people. That is not servant leadership. So we talk about civil leaders, we talk about corporate leaders, and even religious leaders. There is a problem even in the church. Sadly, even in the church that we are actually abusing the leadership. We are lording, as Jesus says. What it means, lording? You are domineering. You are controlling people instead of enabling people, instead of empowering people, instead of lifting people up. We are pressing people up, down, and not wanting people to succeed. That is one of the functions of the leader, to help people to succeed, to be the best that they can. That is true servant leadership. Jesus came to bring the 12 and later the 70 to empower them, to teach them and to guide them and to model after them. Whatever that, G, that Jesus asked the disciples to do, he himself did it. 
He asked them to pray. He was the first in prayer. He asked them to love people. He was the first to love. He asked them to forgive. He was the first to forgive. He asked them to, be, to bless your enemies. He was the first to bless his enemies. And he asked to go to the cross. He was the first to go to the cross. So Jesus never asked us to do something that he himself didn't do. It says that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. We have heard this many times. But the question is, is this true? I would say it is not true. It is not the power that corrupts because the person is already corrupted. It's just waiting for the power to come. So that's why it's so important when we raise up leaders, we have to make sure they have the right character, the right quality to put responsibility on them because they can be... So the, how do we know whether the person is a good leader? Is when we give them a little bit of power and see what they do with the power. Either we see power as a stewardship, that means it is not from me, it is delegated power. Someone authorized me, empower me to act on his behalf. Or he says, I'm the only one with power. You listen to me. And so we dominate, we control people. And so... The heart, the, the, the issue of the matter is the heart. So we're still talking about the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart. At the end of the day, it is our heart that always wants to be number one. It's a heart, it's, it's the flesh that wants to control people. It's the flesh that wants to say, me first. And so in the world, in order to, be, to go to the top, we have to push people down. In order for, for you to go to, to, to rise up to prominence, you have to say bad things about the people. But not in the kingdom. In the kingdom of God, in Jesus' servant leadership, it is different. There was a testimony of recently, I've heard, of a potential candidate to be a senior pastor of a church. I'm not talking about myself. Huh? So, this senior pastor was asked, can you take over to be the senior pastor of the church? And so the, 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 the potential says, no, 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 I'm always be the second man. I will always be the assistant. I don't have the quality to be a senior pastor. And so they, they keep asking him, no, we think you can, we think you can. She keeps saying, no, no, no. He said, but never mind, let me pray first. So he went to pray. He went to talk to his, uh, 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 the family. And then he had the peace of God to say, if this is from God, then I cannot go against God. If God will call me, God will enable me. And so, the last two people that he, he, he consulted was his two mentors. So, he asked the mentors the same thing. You look at me, do you think I can be a senior pastor? And this, and because I, I'm not that kind. And so, both of them said the same thing to him. You can be a senior pastor. So, he was shocked. He said, why? Because you don't want it. So the people who want to be in power, we have to be very careful because very likely they will misuse the power, they will misuse the authority, they will boss you around and they will control you. And so when we don't want something, God will give to us. That's why in Matthew chapter 23, verse 11 to 12, it says, the greatest among you will be the servant of all. God will exalt the humble and God will also humble the exalted one. So we cannot, we cannot hide from God. We cannot play with God. And sometimes where God doesn't give us that position or that authority, perhaps God knows we are not ready. We cannot handle the power because all of us will say, most of us will say, yes, I can, I can, I can do it, I can do it. But sometimes it will destroy our lives because we cannot handle. That's the reason why sometimes God doesn't answer our prayer because God says, if I give you something, I know you cannot handle it. It will break you. It will cause you to fall. And so this is the issue about leadership in the church, in the kingdom of God. We don't wear crowns. Instead, we run away from the crown. But you know who will always ask us to wear our crowns? It is the devil. The devil say, hey, I think you are better than the person. What? Why don't you be take up the position? You know, the, we'll always say, you know, I think you are you're better. Why, why don't you are qualified? Why don't you take it? You know, uh, why, why don't you care about others? That is what the devil will do. But here, Jesus is reminding us, is, no, you must listen to me. I am your Lord. I am your master. And I am the supreme example. Jesus willingly let down, let go, put aside all his power and authority 
to be like us. So in order for us to go up, we must go down. There is a... Can we show the shift logo here? Again, up on the screen. Huh? Uh, if you notice our shift logo that has been designed by, by our amazing team, by the Mac team. Yes, I think they should. Yeah, the shift logo here. I don't know any of you notice anything different about, anything special about the, the, the logo. Yes, the first part is high, the second part is low. So I do not know whether the people who thought about it had this, but as I was preparing this, I was thinking is, in the kingdom, is so different. If you want to go up, you must first go down. If you want to be exalted, you must first be humble. If you want to be the greatest of all, you must be a servant of all, the slave of all. So in this shift that we are doing, even in this year and beyond, we are talking about a leadership that actually honours the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time we serve like a servant leader, we are actually saying, I belong to one Lord, one Jesus, who was the servant leader of all. So the heart of a servant leader is so important. Never self-exalting, never self-promoting, or never self-centered. It's always thinking about others. The leader always thinking about the people that they serve, not thinking about your own personal gain, personal interest. And that's what's happening right now in the, in, the, in the world right now. People are always trying to get everything for themselves. I want to be a leader and I want it all. That is the only reason they want to be a leader. But this does not work in the kingdom of God. So what is the thing that we have to learn from here? That the cross must come before the crown. One day, you and I will receive a crown in heaven, not given by men. There's a difference. Not given by organizations, not given even by the, 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 the royalty in our, in, our, in our titles given. No. One day, the crown that will be given is by the Lord Himself. And that crown will be a crown of righteousness, the crown of life that God is going to give us. And nobody can take away that crown. So that is the only crown, but the crown that people want to give you, please reject, please run away, because this will cause pride to come into your life. So the most important thing that you learn, even that not, not wearing a crown, is that this is the way of discipleship, suffering before the throne. That's what Jesus went through. Jesus had to go through the cross before he was crowned as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the suffering that you and I go through, the hardship, the storm that you and I go through will lead towards one day God will exalt us. One day, not only will we glorify God, that we will have our own glory. What is the glory? The name that God will give you, the, 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 uh, the, the, the power that God will give you, the position that God will give you in heaven. But before we can lead others, very important thing, we must learn to lead ourselves first. There is a command in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4 that says, talks about the role of an overseer, the role of a leader, a, a leader in church. It says, he must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? So in church leadership, in spiritual leadership, you must prove yourself before you are called and appointed and anointed and empowered to be leaders. You must prove yourself. That's why we are very careful in appointing leaders careful in pointing pastors and ministers because they must prove themselves. And what is the best place to prove whether you can handle authority and power and leadership? It starts from your home. How are you managing your home? How are you being a good husband? How are you being a good wife? How are you managing your children, your finances, your spirituality, your family altar? If you can do it well at home, there's a high chance that you can be a good leader in the kingdom and in the ministry. Can we say amen to that? Amen. So leadership, it starts with leading yourself first. And that 
involves self-discipline. That involves control, self-control. I think the hardest person to control is ourselves. We try to control everything else, but we forget that we need to control ourselves. Our words, our thoughts, our eyes, our ears, our hands, our feet, where we go, what we do, what we see and how we think. So leaders follow who? The servant leader follow only one. They follow Jesus. And you will never go wrong when you follow the leadership style of Jesus. When you believe in people, when you choose to invest in people, when you choose to do good to people, when you choose to bless people, when you choose to lift people up and build people, that is a servant leader. A servant leader doesn't push people down, press people down, oppress people, or, or, or depress people down, but actually lift them up. That is the true servant leadership. Do you know that Jesus even washed the feet of his traitor? That is what true leadership is. That means we still give people hope and chance. Never give up on people, even right to the very end on that Thursday night when he commemorated the last, the, 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 the last supper or the, or, or the Holy Communion and he washed their feet. Jesus even washed the feet of his traitor. Did Jesus know that Judas was going to betray him? Yes. And yet he chose to wash his feet. Look at the servant leadership of Jesus. That gives us no excuse to treat people badly. Even though they are not good to us, even though they are, they are difficult to us, even though they insult us, even though they humiliate us. And that is why the ethic or the value of the kingdom is so different from the world that we bless our enemies. We pray for them. We do good to them. So leaders follow the, that. what makes us so different from the world. The Jewish people wants to always want the best place in the temple. Best place when there is a festival or, 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 or thing. They want the prominent place for everybody to see them even when they are fasting. Even when they are, when they are fasting, they make themselves so, so look so terrible, everybody will know that they are fasting. When they give money, they want everybody to know that they are giving money. A servant leader gives cheerfully, gives quietly. Your, you, your right hand don't know what your left hand is doing. That means you give anonymously because you choose to bless others without wanting the, 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 the fame, the title, or the acclaim. The second main point, if leaders don't wear crowns, what do they wear? They wear an apron. But among you will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must first be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. The servant and the slave are the two lowest positions in Jewish society. And so, when we talk about the Gospel of John chapter 13, where again speaks about servant leadership, where Jesus washed the feet of disciples, it speaks about that we are willing to do whatever to, to bless others, to be like Jesus. Jesus, on that night in John chapter 13, he says that he loved his disciples until the very end. And he loved them in the ministry. And what did he do? After he had a meal with them, he began to take off his outer garment. And then he put on a towel, which is like an apron that Jesus put on an apron. An apron symbolizes servanthood, being in the last position. Remember, Jesus says, if you want to be the greatest, you must be the servant of all. And so Jesus began to put, tie a towel around his waist and he began to do something that shocked the disciples because they never thought of even washing his feet as their Lord and Master. And worst of all, they will never wash each other's feet. Why? 
because we know from the story they were all fighting for position. I'm better than you, you know. I'm 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 number one apostle. You are number twelve apostle. You know, I'm number two, you are number three, apostle. So they were all fighting for position, but Jesus began to shock their system and to bring a reversal to them. And Jesus began to say that, if you want to be like me, if you truly love me, if you truly want to be a part of what I'm doing in the world, then you also need to do what I do. Can I ask Brother Darren to come right now? Yes, Brother Darren. Yes, Brother Darren. Yeah. Brother Darren, come. Yes, yeah, yes, have a seat here. Yeah. Can you take out your shoes and your and your socks? I oh, you know, sure. You fold up, yeah. D Darren is our one of our leaders, and I did this in the first service to another leader. So Jesus, being the Lord and teacher did this to his apostles. So I, being the main pastor, I have to set the example uh, of being to my leader by serving him so that he will catch the vision of the church that we are all servant leaders before the Lord. Before Darren goes, we say that Darren represents the leadership of the church. And this is where we are as a church. We don't follow any other leadership pattern or model, but the servant leadership of the Lord. It means no matter what our position we are, like Jesus, he took out his outer garment as Lord and teacher, and he began to put on a servant's attire wearing an apron. And if Jesus, the Lord of heaven, was willing to serve, it means all our leaders are willing to serve. Three reasons why they serve. Firstly, it's because to show that they love the Lord. Secondly, it's because they want to be identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time we come to serve people, not, I'm, Jesus didn't come to start a food washing ceremony, no. Although certain denominations do it, no. The idea is to show love to the people that we serve. The idea is to identify yourself with the greatest servant leader. And the thirdly is that we are here to serve others and not serve ourselves. So this is something that uh, is so powerful that Jesus is teaching all of us. What I did for Darren is nothing compared to what Jesus did for the apostles because Jesus was not just a good teacher Jesus was God himself God came down so high what I did for Darren is what Jesus did for disciples is one million times different because Jesus was already in heaven and he came down to be a man to wash the feet and to go to the cross for you and I so what I would want, uh, Brad Darren, as a representative, and all the leaders who are here, you go downstairs, uh, yeah. All the leaders to do a, a tunnel here. All your, I, can I ask all the connect group leaders, the ministry leaders, we are going to do a tunnel here where the, lead, the servant leaders are here to pray a blessing for you, to walk into the things that God has called them to be. Can I ask all the leaders to quickly come if you are upstairs, if you are up in the, in the tallest room, you're behind, quickly we are going to form a tunnel here uh, on both sides. Huh? And then we would want the rest to come through because the, the leaders are here to show that they love you. The leaders are here to show that you belong to Jesus. And the leaders are here to also be a role model that just as they serve you, you are called to go out and serve others. Yes, can you come in? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, yes, all the leaders, can I ask you to just come? 
all the leaders. Can I ask the pastors to help? Yeah. yeah. Both sides, yeah, both sides. Ministry leaders, connect group leaders, zone leaders. If you are involved in any form of leadership, we want to empower you. We want to re- anoint you. We want to pray for you right now.